Wind chills of around negative 30 Thursday morning prompted a scene that's more common in the Arctic than it is in Brooklyn Center. Some call it sea smoke. Since the Mississippi River is mostly free of ice this year, a fog forms when the very cold air moves across the warmer water. The result is literally breathtaking. But those dangerous wind chills have also caused some local school districts to cancel classes on Thursday. The Anoka Hennepin and Osseo school districts closed school, but because conditions were expected to improve as Thursday wore on, after school and evening activities were to go on as scheduled. Osseo students in grades 6 through 12 also had a flex learning day, which requires students to do lesson plans online from home. The extreme cold also caused an extremely busy day for AAA. The company's roadside assistance service experienced a big surge in calls Thursday morning. Delane Cleveland joins us now with more. Delane? Shannon, cold weather can wreak havoc on your car's battery. It's something a number of people found out the hard way this morning. Today we are seeing an increase in calls, so it is very cold outside and a majority of the calls that we're getting have to do with batteries. We're getting a lot of people calling in about jump starts or needing tows because they can't get their car to start. And then also we usually have a battery replacement service. When it's this cold, we can't do a field battery replacements just because the batteries are too brittle and it's too cold outside to put our tow truck drivers at risk of getting frostbite. Auto on a normal day, AAA's roadside assistance crews get about 300 calls for service. But by noon, their tow truck drivers had already responded to 200 service calls, mostly to jumpstart dead batteries. Meanwhile, AAA officials say warming up your car is certainly one way to avoid a dead battery, but contrary to popular belief, simply starting your car and letting it idle for a few minutes won't do the job. In order to recharge your battery, you actually have to drive the car around for a few minutes. You can't just turn it on and leave it sit. That's not going to help you with charging your battery. So when you start getting close to the zeros and the negatives like we are today and tomorrow, it's good to try and go out every four to six hours if you can, if it's reasonable, to start your car and then drive it around for five minutes if you have a break and can do so. Another piece of advice from AAA is to keep your gas tank filled at least halfway during cold weather. That way you can stay warm in case you become stranded. Shannon. All right. Thank you, Delane. A Maple Grove teen diagnosed with a chronic illness is turning her pain into a purpose. Reporter Pafua Yang sat down with a Maple Grove senior high student and has her story. Hi, um, my name is Macy. I'm a 16 year old from Maple Grove. About four years ago, Macy Lavon found out she has type 1 diabetes. Yeah, it was really scary to happen right before seventh grade. Like, middle school is the moment of like vulnerability, and this is a really rough time to have this added into it. Type 1 diabetes is when the pancreas isn't producing insulin for the body to regulate blood sugar. Maybe we should just display this as one item. To survive, Macy needs to manually give herself insulin. Every day involves um, multiple um, blood sugar checks where I prick my finger and get a little blood out and test that. I used to use needles to give insulin. Now I have an insulin pump. Macy's mother says without the current technology and resources, it's likely Macy wouldn't be here today. So it was a complete shock and and yet we just, you have no choice but to just own it and, and learn. There is a lot of education. Shortly after being diagnosed, Macy didn't wait to start Hi. making an impact. Hi, I was wondering if there's a manager I could speak to. Making call after call, Macy worked with businesses to get donations for her annual silent auctions. And I was wondering if you would be willing to donate. All proceeds from her auctions benefit JDRF, which funds research for type 1 diabetes. JDRF stands for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. JDRF does a lot to support families. Initially, it, upon diagnosis, we were given backpacks with resources for education and even comfort items. Macy has organized online auctions in the past to fund JDRF, but this year she'll be doing her first in-person auction at a brewery in Maple Grove. And so I'm hoping that this is something that will help people realize that, one, it's a serious illness, but it's also like shows how strong people are and that it's really manageable. In Maple Grove, Pafoy Yang, CCX News. Macy's silent auction will be held February 21st, followed by a walk fundraiser the next day.
The revitalization of the former Brookdale Mall shopping area continues with another new store opening on Thursday. A ribbon cutting ceremony kicked off business at the new Xfinity store. The outlet will sell Comcast equipment, cable and internet packages, smart home devices that work with the Comcast network, and will also focus on the company's new venture into mobile devices. As part of the ceremony, the company donated $2,500 to SEEP, the Community Emergency Assistance Program that's been in Brooklyn Center for decades. Having a program that works to create and revitalize people is amazing, and so they're the perfect partner for us to work with in Brooklyn Center. The store's official grand opening is Saturday, and there is also a store in the works for Maple Grove. Google is running a contest and one of the finalists is right here in the Northwest Metro. Tech Dump has a location in Golden Valley. They train and employ adults who face barriers to employment in electronics recycling and refurbishment. The retail arm of the operation Tech Discount sells refurbished tech items. The organization is one of five winners of the Google.org Impact Challenge, which provides $175,000 in grant funding. And they could win $125,000 more if they get the People's Choice Award. What we want to enhance, which the People's Choice Award would allow us to, is further uh, increasing the amount of training people receive on how to go from being a peer to a supervisor, how to work through some of the trauma that they've experienced, building more tools in their toolbox to be an even better leader as they re-enter our community. You can vote online through February 19th for the People's Choice Award. We have a link on our website. The White Center girls hockey team came on strong down the stretch run of the regular season. The Trojans hope to keep the momentum going as they face Blake in the Section 6 AA semifinals. White Center strikes first as Sloan Matthews shoots. It stopped with a Mallory Coffin is there to bury the rebound. It's 1-0 Trojans in the first period. Five minutes later, the defenseman falls and Gretchen Branton takes advantage, sneaking a shot in from along the boards, and it's 2-0 White Zeta. Late in the first, a great rink-wide pass to Addie Burton, and she makes a great move and scores on the backhander for Blake. The Bears pull within 2-1 to one after one. Second period, and Lily Delianidis is denied on the breakaway by Trojans goalie Mikey, Micah Bergeron. Great stop there by the Trojans goalie. But moments later, Wyzetta turns it over, and Delianidis makes them pay, snapping a shot home for a goal that evens the score at 2-2. 27 seconds later, Branton slams on the brakes and finds the trailing Coffin. Her shot off the goalie's glove and in. Wyzetta retakes the lead 3-2, and that's the score after two. Under five minutes left, and Sophie Heyer gets control and scores high on the stick side for an insurance goal. Boisetta beats Blake 4-2 to advance to Friday's final. In the other 6-AA semifinal, top seed Edina scored four goals in the first period on the way to beating Benel St. Margaret 6-1. So it's Boisetta versus Edina for the section championship Friday at 7 p.m. at Parade Ice Garden. And in Section 5 AA, top seed Maple Grove meets Blaine for the championship Friday at 7 p.m. at Roseville Arena. You can watch tape delayed coverage of that game on CCX1 and ccxmedia.org at 10 o'clock Friday night. The Breck girls hockey team won the state Class A title the last two seasons. The Mustangs aim to punch their ticket to St. Paul Wednesday night as they faced Orono for the Section 5A title. The Mustangs come out flying and pump 17 shots on goal in the first period, but Orono goalie Adam Lytle stops everything and it's scoreless after one. Early in the second period, the Spartans strike. Kaylee Nickham redirects the shot by Sidney Dickamblowis, and it's one to nothing. Breck answers, a nice move by Sadie Lindsay, and she scores here to make it one all. Ten seconds later, Allie Quali pumps in the rebound, and it's two to one, Mustangs. Orono ties it again, but Ashley Halverson zips a perfect pass to Olivia Mobley. She bangs the one-timer in, and Breck is up three to two. Still in the second period, Sadie Lindsay comes off the wall and snaps home another goal for a 5-2 Mustangs lead. And they win 6-2 for a third straight section title. Going into this game, we knew we had to um, come in with grit, come in with intensity, and just bring our all. Um, Orno put up uh, 
a great fight, and it was a super good game. So. Using beads as part of your fishing arsenal can be helpful under certain conditions. Terry Tuma explains in this week's CCX Ice Fishing Tip. Had several questions asked, especially at seminars recently, about beads and hooks. And yes, I do a lot of bead fishing, if you will. Generally speaking, a colored hook and a, the beads being an opposing color. For instance, here we have a red hook with a chartreuse bead. This bead becomes a color attractor and also, a, shall we call it, a little extra bulk, if you will. Does it work all the time? No, it doesn't, but it definitely is something that we should experiment with. Generally speaking, you want a four millimeter bead for panfish, a five millimeter for, uh, for walleye and jumbo perch, and then too, a lot of people are asking, well, what, how do you put the bead on? Where do you put the bead? First of all, slide the bead on the line and then tie your hook on so it's going to move up and down on your fishing line but it is a great tool if you cannot find beads at your local uh, bait store go to a craft store they got tons of beads at very inexpensive prices and they also had these prism beads something else we should take and take uh, and experiment with those kind of beads so give it a try you're going to be very very surprised at your success rate